I could build a box every week for the rest of my life and not build the same box twice. Because every piece of wood is slightly different than the next in its characters, its properties, its weight, its density. This box is, is very exhilarating, it's terrifying. You, you don't know if it's, it's gonna be the success that you wanted it to be, so there's risk at every turn. That's the other part of what do I love about trees or what do I love about wood. It just doesn't stop. It just seems to me that it's just an endless, endless creative process, creative road that I can go down. I realized what I wanted to do very young. What does that mean? It means I was working with wood, I was making stuff, and I was playing music. So anybody that plays an instrument inevitably starts noodling around with that instrument, takes it apart, you know? So I was playing guitars, I'd pull my guitars apart, I was thinking about how they were built. Growing up on the East Coast, my father, he used to drag me around to uh, job sites with him, so I was always helping him build stuff. So I was always a maker, always working with wood. When the music kind of slowed down, the older I got, I didn't want to be on the road anymore. And um, I just kind of fell back to it. I was always just making stuff. All these tools, that's the cool thing about hand tools too. Most of the ones I use, they all have a story. Like this guy, I don't even know if he makes tools anymore. Like this one guy in his shop who made this knife. Now this one is a marking gauge. I've had this. this is by far the oldest tool sitting here in front of me. This little square is probably one of the nicest little squares you can get. <laughs> if you go to a big box store and buy a square and check it, it's probably not square. Interesting. Yeah, this is like surgical square. <laughs> Being a hand tool woodworker, so no power tools, you're always pushing the limits to be able to physically do stuff. And anytime you put your hands to a tool, there's the, uh, the possibility of failure. And it may not go well because you're just human. See, there was another earlier drawing of it. This end here, the static end really felt like this was its own piece of furniture. And then this was like an, an, another box that slid in and then this kind of, I really kind of liked this, and I never got there, this arched bit. I kind of got to some of this, this light box idea. This never came together. Like, I talked about little cutouts in the, in the side legs, like cutting out little windows and having little, adding little details. I was going to take some guitar building components, a couple of ideas I had, and try to incorporate that into it. Just didn't get there. The older I get, the, the more I realize that, you know, it's okay. It's wood, even if it wasn't wood, it's okay for things not to go exactly as we want them to go. We don't know what's coming around the corner next, really. I don't know if I'm gonna be open in January. That said, that can be exciting. Scary things, that uncertainty is, is not a bad thing. And for a creative person, um, you kind of, you kind of feed off that. I don't have any regrets. I loved being on the road in my 20s with my band and pre-internet. Every now and again I'll miss something about that bit, that lifestyle, but not that often. I like, I like, I like slow living. I like, I like, uh, yeah, I like taking it slow. Maybe when I was younger, I was in such a hurry. Because I wasn't always that way. What I find when students come here, the hardest thing they have is slowing down and just not trying to get everything done at once. Take your time, things will get done. And usually you get more done that way. So to people that just are frustrated and scared and not knowing what's going on, don't worry about it. Worry, you're not going to do anything. It's not going to help worrying about it. Just really try to enjoy the moment and even, you know, enjoy what you can and don't, don't worry about what you can't. <laughs>